Hello, uh, as you can tell, I changed the uh, the name to the channel to My Trucker Life because uh, it was kind of convoluted dealing with uh, road life, couldn't really look it up. So, um, this video is about the unprofessional work ethic of truck drivers and the lack of uh, professional courtesy. All right, so I'm here in Cincinnati. I get here. I booked out a load going to Dallas and Houston to two stop. And uh, I guess uh, someone ain't very happy out there. So um, I get here. I pull the trailer from the door in order to slide the tandems. So the tandems already slid back, meaning that it is in the door. And the trailer handle is severely bent and will not close, therefore latch and lock so I can seal it. Now, uh, this is caused by drivers not doing their post trips, okay? And them just moving on to the next job. When it's so easy, when you can call, break down, break down gets TA out here, road tech to fix this stuff. That way we don't have these problems. So I've been sitting here for eight hours plus and Road Squad still hasn't called me because they're looking for a part to fix this trailer. This is a problem, right? Uh, I didn't send pictures to the director and stuff like that because this is, it's, it's so ridiculous. I didn't come across trailers where it's so obvious that they're not being post-trip because they're not being fixed. And I'm having way too many issues. Uh, let's move on to another issue. Uh, high beams. How many of these truck drivers drive with their high beams on? In against traffic and coming from behind you into your mirrors. Now, here's a real thing. All right. Premature eye fatigue caused by bright lights. Right. Uh... This used to be a torture technique in the military because uh, bright lights uh, can cause pain and uh, damage to the eye. Now, some of these trucks have some extremely bright lights, all right? And even passenger cars, it, it doesn't really make a whole lot of difference. It's the fact that you cause them premature eye fatigue in a truck driver that in itself can be extremely dangerous because our eyes get tired, the rest of our body's not really tired, but our eyes will get tired. And you can look this up. So it'll cause your eyes to droop, start drooping, you know, to not want to focus. Death perception is off. Things things of that nature. So it's going to cause you, you're going to have to go to sleep. You're going to have to lay it down, go to sleep, give your body time to recuperate, your eyes time to uh, recuperate uh, from that barrage of uh, a bright light. See, the contrast at night in the, in the high beams, that's what really does it. And a lot of you guys need to understand that, is that... It causes other drivers who were out there trying to make a living just like you are, or they are. It causes uh, uh, a, very, a lot of discomfort and uh, can also cause us to, uh, you know, get into an accident or not to be delivered on time and else to use up off-duty and on-duty time needlessly. All right. How about the next one? How about blocking lanes for all the drivers, especially getting off or uh, off from an exit onto the highway and you can't slow down a little bit to let a driver over right this is professional courtesy you know we're trying to get on the highway right we're trying to we're all trying to do the same thing as far as drivers concerned we're all trying to get to our destination make money uh, and to deliver our our, uh, our loads on time so you got that then you got taking the let the, uh, the 30 minute brakes in the few islands right and you got blocking in drivers in the truck stops you know i understand there's some illegal parking that happens because you have to be able to stop you have to be asleep and rest i i get that i've done it and stuff but the cur the professional courtesy comes in is when you have a line of trucks and then you park perpendicularly across them you know that does uh and then you block them in i mean me what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna bang on your damn sleeper. I'm gonna wake your ass up. Okay, I don't care what you don't like about it. I'm gonna bang on your sleeper. If that doesn't work, then I'm gonna 
going to the truck stop, and I'm having to. If that don't work, then I'm just gonna see if they tow your damn truck, cause, cause what you're doing is unacceptable. Uh, I've seen it done. I've seen drivers uh, get towed out of truck stops as a result of that. And it really needs to happen more often, truthfully, because it's it's ridiculous. Uh, then I've been this year alone. I've been hit in truck stops twice. I got hit in uh, in uh, Missouri, and I got hit in Dallas, sitting parked. I was parked and got hit. I was bobtailed and got hit, and I had a trailer and a guy backed into me. You know. So, and then you got to file insurance. The one guy ran who hit me in the, when I was bobtailed. He ran, so never got his information. And the guy who hit my who hit me in Missouri, he tried to run, but another driver actually stepped in front of his truck to, to keep him from running, and then came in and told me what had happened. So I was able to come came, I was able to come out and take pictures of everything before that guy. And then he, and then the one after the police took uh, showed up, he took off and never gave me his information but I had pictures of, of everything on his truck plates truck number truck company everything and, and the damage and I had his hands in the picture because he was trying to scrape away the damage uh in all the the uh, pieces of metal you know hanging off my trailer and things like that that he caused so um and his company tried to say that he, he him and his truck did not exist but there it was in my pictures so that's 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 a couple of things. Uh, it's just the I don't know if it's just a lack of training, you know, a lack of good trainers, training guys coming into the to the uh, industry. Um, I was trained by uh, my dad and my stepdad uh, at a young age, and you know they're they're about professional courtesy and just professionalism all together and just being a a a truck driver that is uh crossing all his t's and dotting all his i's right because you want the road to be smooth as far as travel you know if you're trying to race from lane to lane blocking traffic things like that you're impeding traffic you're impeding progress I mean, eventually this type of driver is going to cause an accident, whether directly or indirectly. It doesn't really matter. It's a hazard, right? And, you know, not not using your blinkers and uh, signaling your intentions. And just doing really idiotic things, having bad practices, you know. Not even pulling up in the fuel line, just sitting in the fuel line and just leave your truck. You know, I've seen truck drivers actually steal the plates of other truck of other truck drivers' uh, equipment. When they do that, I've seen that happen. Um, and I don't want to see truck drivers do stuff like that because it adversely affects our careers. I mean, you put that guy out of service, and now him or his company has to figure out a way to get him a tag. You know. I don't have to see that, but if you deserve it, look, you deserve it. And uh, at some point, you have to be objective enough to know that you are not being a professional, you know, at your at your job. So I don't like the idea of not being good at what I do. Okay, I take a great amount of pride in. Um, being a, a truck driver that keeps his skills current and very smooth. My favorite thing to do is backing up. It doesn't matter when, where, how, whatever it is. I love a challenge. And it doesn't matter Chicago, New York, whatever. But I'll nail it all. You know, even though I got that confidence, you know, I still go through all the bases and basics dealing with dealing with backing the setup and everything else the safety make sure i don't hit anything stuff like that and if i doubt it and and i'm pretty good at at gauging whether i can do it or not then i leave it alone and I'll, i'll figure it out eventually so um the safe the safety aspect of all this dealing with courtesy is a real thing right 
dealing with the brights, dealing with the not signaling, dealing with the blocking of the traffic on and off exits, uh, dealing with cutting people off in, in you know in these uh, equipment as large as this is ridiculous. Not pre-tripping or post-tripping the equipment that you that you are hauling. You know, cause these trailers, look, I've come across trailers that obviously when I pull strip because the tires are completely flat hanging off the rims. Okay. Tires are so badly flat spotted that they vibrate the trailer like you wouldn't believe. And you know, it's ridiculous. Lights not working. Uh and things like that. So and then, you know, since I've been a road runner, I've had I've had to take pictures of loads uh and send them in because they're so haphazardly loaded, you know, the, I've, I've had a terminal manager had to come out and help me secure the back end of a load so it wouldn't fall out of the trailer, because when they, when they loaded the back end of the trailer, they crushed things that were underneath, and everything fell over, and you can just, when you look in there, you see how things were loaded, it wasn't even secured, it was not secured at all. So he had to bring out the forklift and push, try to hold that back so we could open up the doors. And then he had to take out uh, like three or four pallets, you know, so he can safely uh, manipulate the, the cargo when I can put it in the door. You know, it's stuff like that. And I just sent pictures uh, not too long ago into the night dispatch, you know, of a load that was going to... Uh, um shoot I forgot where I took it but I just threw things in the back of the trailer again and this came out of Cincinnati and you know I've had a couple of those loads come out of Cincinnati uh that unfortunately um this load I just picked up I popped the you know when I when I pulled it back I always look in the back because uh you always want to look at your your cargo and make sure it's secure they actually did a pretty good job Stacked up, the trailer is completely loaded, front to end, top to bottom, and they actually got a load bar up there for the loose stuff, so that was pretty cool. So I don't have to worry about that, as far as I know. Uh, like I've had things banging back and forth in the front of the trailer. You can hear, you know, when you're driving and you're turning and things like that. You can actually hear it sliding all over the place. So I had to call that in because you have to cover your own ass, man. You have to cover your own ass, and I refuse to let someone's unprofessional uh, uh, duties or you know uh, performance affect me I do my best I do everything I can to make sure everything I do is correct that way the previous individual doesn't affect my job you know that's, that's very important I hope you guys go through all the same processes and processes and things like that that way you have a smooth career it doesn't mean nothing's ever going to go wrong because it's going to eventually go wrong and you just have to, to deal with it properly and as best you can because the people the higher ups and things like that who make decisions who see these things they, they know your track record they know what you try to do and that you try to be up and up and square about everything and you tell the truth you know they're going to side with you because that's the type of individual or that's the type of work ethic you have and those are the, and you are the type of driver they want in their uh, in their fleet so uh, that's what's important to me um, it's like you know when they load the trailers and the loading strategy you know it's a one stop all right the loading strategy can be poor because the trailer axles will be so damn heavy uh, Mr. Todd had an issue with that. He found out just recently. He did a video where he was over by a couple thousand feet or more on his axles. Now, in California, here's the problem. Here is the damn problem. He gets dispatched. There's no cat scales in his area or on his route pr pre, uh, prior to the way station that he's going to eventually get pulled in. Now, he's in California. You're going to get pulled in every way station that's open in Cali. That's the way it goes. I've been through the, from the bottom of Cali to the top and all the way up to the Canadian border. I've been through all that. When you're in California, you will get pulled over in way stations that are open. All right? And in order for him to go to a way station, all right, he would have had to have drove driven 60 miles 
unpaid, 60 unpaid miles all the way out to a way station, paid an additional $11.50, right? Plus, maybe also an additional for a second way to make sure he was cool, right? And at the same time, trying to make sure that his bridge law uh, is uh, compliant where his, uh, where his uh, trailer uh, uh, axles are. When he slid his tandems, he could not be legal because he slid his tandems and he was about a foot away from being legal in California with the California Bridge Law. Anywhere else he would have been all right, right? But in California, he was about a foot away, so he couldn't leave. So what happens at that point? Well, someone comes in, has to offload some cargo. That way he's compliant and he can slide his tandems and therefore be legal in California. That is not entirely his fault. Okay. One, right? There's got to be someone's got to see that a, I, that driver does not have a way to scale his his load, right? Because there's no scales around in this area and even up to where he's going. I mean, the the driver also has to uh, realize this, right? Anytime I look at my the weight in my trailer, that's, a, that's a, after. Uh, and when I get my packet, I look at that. So I need to see if I'm going to move my tandems or not. So anytime I'm in high 20s or anywhere in the 30s, I will move my tandems. Well, the problem with that, a couple of these trailers, you can't move your tandems because the pins just don't come in. You hammer on them, whatever, they don't move, stuff like that. So it's like, I mean, what are you going to do, right? So then, I mean, road squad again. Anyways, then there's that. And uh, so, I think it would be it would be a really nice gesture of you know if Roadrunner got with the the uh, warehouse managers or terminal managers when dealing with the loading, and try to determine a, a better way of safely and evenly loading these trailers dealing with California because of the issue in California, right? Because he was over by like three thousand pounds or more. That's just that's just nuts. You just over. I mean, in order to do that, you gotta know at some point that what you're placing in the back end of the trailer is heavy. You know, that's like what Budweiser does. Budweiser will stack everything in the front of the damn trailer, and your drives will be at thirty-eight thousand pounds. And you have to, but they have a scale there, so you scale three or four times. You have to get the load reworked and stuff like that. It's a constant hassle, right? But in Todd's uh, situation. He don't have a scale in his area. He has to drive, you know, 60 miles out of his way to try to get to a scale that's unpaid miles and then also pay for the scales and things like that. So the overhead gets ridiculous in what they expect you to do, right? And then, but the uh, but on the other side, we expect, you know, this company to make sure this trailer is loaded properly. So it works both ways. Professional courtesy and professional ethics work both ways, from loader to driver, loader to driver. You make sure my trailer is loaded properly and evenly, and I make sure that my tandems are in the right place. That way I can legally drive, right? So, uh, like I said, it works both ways. So, I mean, let's find a way to get that done. I mean, that'd be really, really helpful, and it's the professional thing to do, okay? Uh you know, with that, I'm going to go ahead and close this out. I don't want this to be too long. And uh, uh, as a side note, uh, I got, I received information uh, about the complaints I had dealing with the company. They're being worked on and stuff like that. And uh, they're actively trying to, to resolve everything. Um, and I had given them more time so they could do this. Uh, there is communication that is ongoing uh, with me so so far I'm happy about the process they they are they are taking in order to get everything resolved and hopefully they get they get everything resolved I don't want to leave Roadrunner I, I actually like here I like, like I said I like the idea of this place it's like any other company there are issues it's you know there there is human error uh, that results here just like it is anywhere and uh, I would just like to see a good company get better uh, with their drivers and obviously with uh, their loading practices and 
things of that nature. So with that, this is uh, my trucker life. And uh, I hope that my experiences will help you to learn and grow and uh, also uh, become a uh, better driver and a more professional driver. So this is Randy, and I'm out.